Kind of hot Nabi relatives. And B.Y. Tahushka. Opie Miha. What's good, relatives? Hope you're having a great morning today. Um, so, um, last night um, on uh, Kuda Mayo's uh, live stream, um, I was actually inspired by something that he was going over. And um, it, it was uh, the topic of uh, slavery and the time frames and different things like that. So what I did was is I went back into the um, free African Americans page. There's a portion in there where you can look and find this uh, Petersburg, Virginia Register of Free Negroes and Mulattoes from 1794 to 1819. Okay, so I'm gonna read through this. Um, on the side here, um, I put uh, the abbreviations that they use in this, and um, it doesn't stay on the screen, so what will happen is if we see an abbreviation, we'll click on it, and it will uh, put us back over to this. And then uh, when we get to the end of this, or the end of uh, how much of it I'm going to go through for today, i got a couple other things I wanted to show you as well, okay? So let's read. Petersburg, Virginia, Register of Free Negroes and Mulattoes from the year 1794 to 1819. It says the following is a working transcript of the first register of free people of color kept by the clerk of the Hustings Court in Petersburg, Virginia. This volume is the, early, is the earliest urban register in Virginia and actually contains re-entries that date to the 1850s. Um, other volumes continued entries from 1819 to the Civil War. The transcript of the original text was compiled by uh, Michael Nichols and uh, Lene Howard Harris. And uh, you can look these people up if you want to I already have, so I know, you know about their credentials or whatnot. Um, it is fairly literal. Although the arrangement of the date of entry has been standardized and some abbreviations have been used in the interest of space. It says from uh, his own research and records of manumissions, and we're going to go over this, manumissions, gathered with Harris, Nichols added the information inserted in brackets, which provide citations to deeds of manumission of a will that freed the individual. Records of registrations in other uh, jurisdictions or to court cases where freedom was won. Also included is information about marriages and to some, but not all, appearances in other court, legislative and tax records, as well as to other entries and the registers that help to connect or suggest links to other regi to other uh, registrants. Reference references to Petersburg register entries numbered greater than 946. Um, so what they're telling you is, is there's over 900 people in this list. Okay. And they're all and they're all numbered. Um, are to be found in subsequent registers. The last page below lists some of the common abbreviations, which I have here on the side. I'm um, using the trans transcription. Geographical references within the uh, registration entry should help the reader decipher the abbreviation using the citation to local records. All right, next it says uh, registers uh, free Negroes and mulattoes in the town of Petersburg made and entered pursuant to an act of assembly passed December 10th, 1793, entitled an act for regulating the police of towns in this commonwealth and the restraint and to restrain a practice of Negroes at large. And um, if you want to know what this Negroes at large is, um, just Google it. 
you'll find plenty of document, actual documentation written about what this is. All right. Because I want, you know, I'd rather you do the research to see it for yourself than me tell you what it is. All right, so let's begin. March 20th, 1794. Number one, Lucy, a black Negro woman about 40 years old, about five feet high, emancipated by Aggressive Davis in Hustings Court of uh, PBG is Petersburg, have obtained a copy of this register. All right, number two, April 1st, 94. Number two is Ned, a dark yellow Negro man, 50 years old, 5'8 high, emancipated by James Curitan and Susan Heath in the precinct of PR, PRGEO is Prince George County, have obtained a copy of this register. All right, let's go to number three, April 2nd, 1794. Number three, Frank, a dark yellow Negro man, 47 years old, near 5'11", emancipated by David Bradley in the Isle of Wight County. Court obtained copy, renewed July 9th, 1805, due June 13th, 1810, color dark brown, pitted with smallpox, and has a lump or rise on the upper part of his forehead. All right, let's keep it moving. April 3rd, 1794. Um, we have number four, Mingo, a black Negro man, 42 years old, five and a half high, emancipated by James Curitan and Susanna Heath of uh, Prince George County Court, have obtained a copy. All right, number seven or excuse me, number five. And uh, we're gonna start seeing some surnames on here too, so pay attention to that as well. Number five, Israel Condre or De Cordre, a light mulatto man, 30 years old, five and a half high, stout maid, born on the island of St. Domingo at Port-au-Prince. So, we all know that island as the Dominican Republic, also Haiti. Uh, came into the state of Virginia from Bristol in England as a free man in the year 1783. Interesting. Um, have obtained a copy of his register certified and signed, re-entered June 13, 1810. Has a long scar on his right thumb Ditto, July 23rd, 1822, purchased and freed wife Sookie Ellis and son Israel and Alexander from Chas Duncan of, Ches of Chesterfield. See, Petersburg, uh, let's see, deed book. That's what DB stands for, deed book, too. 565 says July 2nd, 1798. Indeed, book two, 623, November 1797. In June 1791, was security for marriage bond of Jacob Brandon and Chloe Honeycutt. And in 1809, for Alexander Stevens and Mary Curtis, spinster. In 1799, unsuccessfully petitioned, petitioned the assembly for compensation for his role along with Richmond Graves in organizing a party of men who saved 133 HHDS of tobacco and a Bowling's Warehouse Fire. In 1803, listed as a 40-year-old porter, but without wife and children. And I believe they are number, it says see below number 596 for wife Suki Ellis, in 879 for son Benjamin. Daughter Susan or Susanna, she's number 1069. 
12 or 13 in 1820, married in 1827, uh, Champion Hill, number 1807, age 33 in 1831. Israel Nicordra, possibly his son, appears on the 1821 census as a sailor. In March 1820, Eliza Jane Beverly, the older sister of Marion, number 10, number 1068, age 15, and Susan, number 1069, age 12 or 13, presented both for registration, noting parents as Israel de Cordre and Susan Ellis, the latter now dead. An obituary of Israel de Cordre appears in January 9th. 1829 issue of Freedom's Journal, active in Davenport's and later uh, Guilfield Baptist Church. All right, let's keep it moving. June 30th, 1794. Number six, Gabriel Brandon, a dark mulatto man about 27 years old, uh, five and a half high or thereabouts born in Prince George County of a free woman and raised in Petersburg. Copy delivered him in 1803, listed as a 33-year-old carpenter, husband of Jency Ruffin, 28, along with Edith, seven, Phyllis, five, Lucinda, three, and Mary Ann, three months, all named, all named Ruffin the son of Plato Cook and Mary Brandon, C number 712, and the will of Plato Cook, listed, in, listed on the 1795 uh, tax list, then witty portion. Gabriel Brandon, born October 2nd, 1767, uh, recorded as son of Mary Brandon in Bristol Parish Register. All right. Keep it moving. Next we have, uh, it's August 16th, 1794. So pay attention to yeah, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of activity in 1794. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. Number seven, Charles Watts, a light mulatto man, 45 years old, five seven high, born free in Prince George County, obtained a certificate in 1803, listed as a 53-year-old 50, painter, husband of Polly Carey, 40, appears on 1795 tax list, then witty portion, with two black title bolts and two horses. In November 97, court binds him, binds to him until she is 18, a small female mulatto child believed to be free named Millie. Since Christianized, Elise and called Eliza Morgan, brought in a vessel to town. In June 9th, uh, Morgan, now 12 and a half years old, is bound apprentice to uh, Elsie Field, a free black woman until 18. Field is probably number two, 278 below. Watts serves as security in 1801 for marriage bond of William Brandon and Lucy Scott. Watts' unnamed sister is the wife of John Chavis of Mecklenburg, a vet of the, Revolution, of the Revolutionary War. The service papers of Chavis were destroyed when Chas Watts' house burned down, but when not clear, see petition of Joseph Towns, Mecklenburg legislation, legislative petition, December 14, 1820. Now, in this, in this uh, description here, we just heard that um, mulatto kids or black kids or whatever you want to call them were being bonded to other mulatto or black free people of color. So... And the other things that I was reading about the family histories, we never really found out, you know, anyone's anyone's race. We probably just assumed that these were white people. Um, 
it just describes here that that's not always the case. All right, let's keep it moving. August 16th, 1794, Morris Evans, a light mulatto man about 5'8 high, 40 years old or thereabouts, born free, served an apprenticeship with Colonel William, William Call in Prince George County, obtained certificate, appears on the 1790 Petersburg tax list with Sally Ellis, then witty portion. She may be the uh, it says S-E. Let me see if there's an abbreviation for S-E. I don't see it. Okay. She might. She may be the S-E who married Isaac Gilmore, number 112 in August 1792. All right. Keep it moving. Our next person. We're in August 16th, 1794. Number nine, Jesse Scott. A light mulatto man, five, six and a half high, who uh, served as a soldier and a freeman during the American Revolution, about 34 years old, obtained a certificate, second copy delivery, December 9, 1799, first not returned, said to be wetted and rubbed to pieces. Appears on 1795 tax list, then witty portion. In April 1793, Scott complained of a, of a breach of peace by Henry Oakwood, who was admonished by the court and discharged. All right, let's keep it moving. So we got next. Next, we have, um, this is uh, still August the 16th, 1794. Um, number 10, William Scott, a light mulatto man, 5'6 high, about 41 years old, who served as a soldier and a free man in the American Army during the Revolution, obtained certificate, a tax list and witty portion in April 1796, was allowed $3 monthly for three months' support by the town. All right, let's keep it moving. August 16th, 1794, so still the same exact day we got all these people uh, turning in their paperwork. Number 11, Charles Coleman, a dark mulatto man near 5'8 high, about 25 years old, born in the uh, possession of John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County, from whom he obtained his freedom by a judgment of the general court, being the descendant of an Indian and served as an apprentice with Robert Armstead in Petersburg. Has a scar on left cheekbone, April 30th, 1798, a copy delivered first, first one being returned and destroyed. September 1st, 1800, copy delivered, former one returned, not listed as a plaintiff in Robin versus John Hardaway, May 2nd, 1772, but would have been about three years old. All right, keep it moving. Um, next, we got now still August 16, 1794. Number 12, Ned Butler, a black Negro man about five, six and a half high, about 47 years old, emancipated in Dinwiddie County in 1788 by James Butler, re entered May 12, 1802, renewed July 9, 1805. All right, let's keep it moving. Still August 16, 1794, we got number 13, Nathan. Um, a Negro man, not very black in complexion, five, four and a half high, about 34 years old, emancipated by Robert Pleasance in Henrico County Court in 1782. Let me get our uh, list back up here. 1782, obtained a copy. Um, and uh, that looks like it's a deed book of some sort. August uh, 1782 was to be free at the, was to be free at 21 in December 
1788. No age difference would have been 26. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have next. You know, so we're still August 16th, 1794. Um, number 14, David Thomas, a dark mulatto man, near 5'11 high, 28 years old, born and raised in Prince George and in Whitty counties. Obtained certificate. See number 20 for wife, um, Parthena Cornett. A. David Thomas marries Parthena Ellis in September 1798. His security for marriage bond of John Anderson and Kizzy Matthews in 1798. In 1803 is listed as a 50 year old tobacco steamer or stemmer with Athena, 40. Uh, stemmer Jacima, 18. Stemmer Betsy, 11. Stemmer and Patsy for not age differences. Then it says on 1795, tax list in witty portion. On 1821, census as poor, followed by Parthenia Thomas, laborer, and children John. Um, it says number uh, 1,303, 21 and 23, David number 1451, 21 and 27 and then Susan. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, still August 16, 1794, number 15, Plato Brandon. Probably Brandon. Oh, okay, it says Brandon, but it's Brandon. It should be Brandon. A dark brown mulatto man, 5'6 high, about 28 years old. Born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. Obtained certificate in November 1792, unsuccessfully brought suit against Thomas Stroud for trespass, assault, and battery, listed on a 1795 tax list in Woody portion, was on uh, Chesterfield County tax rolls in 1791 and 1792. All right, keep it moving. Next, um, still August 16, 1794, uh, number 16, Moses Kate, about 5'7 high, near 39 years of age, a black Negro man, emancipated in court of uh, Prince George in 1785 by uh, Stephen Pebbles, obtained certificate. All right, keep it moving. August 16, 1794, number 17, Nancy Kemp Jasper. A small, light-colored mulatto woman, about 4'10 and a half high, about uh, 29 years old, born free in Charles City County and raised in uh, Prince George County. Obtained certificate, copy delivered September 12, 1800. First not returned, re-entered uh, September 6, 1805. Long black hair and has lost some of her front upper teeth. Re-entered. May 19, 1814, split in her upper lip, C number 364 and number 945 below. All right. Next we have, it's August 18th, 1794. Number 18, John Cypress. A brown mulatto man, 5'6 high, 23 years old, born free in Surrey County. Obtained certificate, re-entered February 27, 1806, and has a scar across his nose. No papers returned. Apparently, the man who was convicted and condemned to death for horse stealing in Petersburg District County, or excuse me, District Court, in April 1799, described as late of the parish of Abel Morrow in Sussex County. Numerous residents of Petersburg successfully petitioned on his behalf in May 1799 and indicated he had once lived in Petersburg. See Executive Papers of James Wood, Box 4, Folder 6, May 1st to the 15th, 1799, Executive Journals, May 13th, 1799, for pardon. All right, keep it moving. Next, uh, August 18, 1794, 
Number 19, doll, a dark brown Negro woman, five, three and a half high, or thereabouts, about 25 years old, emancipated by William Clark in the Hustings Court of uh, Petersburg, obtained certificate, re-entered April 1st, 1805, uh, Petersburg, deed book number two, 205. August 8, 1792, with her two children, Alexander Campbell and Mariah Griffin. On uh, May 6, I believe that is 1705, William Dunavant examined for stabbing, for stabbing Doll Griffin, a free black woman, and found not guilty. Doll Griffin appears as a 37 year old cake seller in 1803 with children. Mariah, 13, she's number 683. Eliza, 9, she's number 695. Mary, 6, she's number 694. And Andrew, one possibly living with Benjamin Honeycutt, a 37-year-old servant who does not register, but is listed on the um, Petersburg 1795 tax list for the witty portion of Petersburg. All right, next we got uh, August 18, 1790. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Uh, 1794, number 20, Parthena Cornette, and we, uh, her name was mentioned above. A yellow mulatto woman, five, six and a half high, stout maid, 27 years old, or thereabouts, born free in Northampton County, North Carolina. Re-entered June 13, 1810. Now, Parthena Thomas, wife of David Thomas, has a scar near the side of her left eye. In September 1798, Parthena Ellis married David Thomas. In 1803, is listed as a 40-year-old tobacco stemmer with David, 50, stemmer. He's number 14. Jacima, 18, stemmer. Betsy, 11, stemmer. And Patsy, 4. No age discrepancy on 1821 census following David for she had labor with children, John, David, and Susan. All right. Keep it moving. Um, August 18, 1794, number 21 is Thomason Chavis, a dark brown, well-made mulatto woman. 5'2 uh, high, about 29 years old, born free, born of a free woman in, in uh, Williamsburg. Copy delivered August 14, 1800. The original not returned, alleged to be lost. All right, keep it moving. Next we have, so it's August 18, 1794 still. Number 22, Plato. A dark brown Negro man, 5'9 high, about 57 years old, emancipated by Edmund Ruffin in uh, French George County. It says, uh, no extent public record. This is likely Plato Cook, who marries Mary Brandon and who are the grandparents of children by Gabriel Brandon and Jenny Ruffin. In 1803, listed as a 65-year-old carpenter, See number 712 below. If Plato Cook been on 1795 tax list then witty portion with seven blacks over 16 and two horses in his will of 1812, uh, will book number 280, he lists as heir son Aaron Brander, uh, Shadrick Brander, Daniel Brander, Moses Brander, wife Mary Brander and her daughters Betsy, Judy, and Polly and grandchildren Mary, the daughter of son Gabriel, um, May 1813, Mary's, Mary's Mary Brandon in 1812 um, is granted administration of the estate of his daughter Polly, Molly, Mary, Mary Brandon, James, in August 1812. All right. Next, we have uh, still August 18, 1794. We got number 23, Thomas Barber, 
I like Brown Mulatto, man. Five and a five and a five and a half high. And thin made, about forty six years old, born free. See number two hundred and forty nine below for um indication he is dead by eighteen oh three. Maybe the Thomas Barber, who married Judy Kelly in 1785, his widow is named is named Judah, but marriage regist register indicates are white. A Thomas Barber, mulatto servant to Reverend William Lay, complained in Chesterfield in 1799, and Lay discharged him. Note he would have been 31 then. The age free mulatto children were bound to prior to 1765. All right. August 18, 1794, number 24, Rebecca Harris, a light brown mulatto woman, 5'1 high, about 34 years old, born free in Chesterfield County, re entered April 8, 1805, since first registered, is pitted with smallpox. Bound out in Chesterfield in May six, uh, 1768 to William Burton. All right. Next we have, it's August 18, 1794. Number 25 is Betty Morse. A light brown mulatto woman, five high, about 40 years old, born free in Chesterfield County. Renewed July 9, 1805. Um, in 1803, Elizabeth Morris appears as a 60-year-old washer. A Betty Morris ordered bound out in uh, Chesterfield in March 1769. All right. Um, August 18, 1794. Um, number 26 is Mary Alden, a light brown stout mulatto woman, 5'2 high, about 53 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right, August 18th, 1794 still. Number 27, Elizabeth uh, Dutchfield. A light brown mulatto woman, 5'2 high, about 27 years old, born free in Yorktown. Re-entered June 13th, 1810, and also her three children. See below following number 587. In December 1772, the York County Court ordered that ordered the Yorkhampton Parish Church Wardens to bind her out. York County Judge mentioned Order 1772 to 74, 171. In Petersburg, she brings suit against John uh, Maysville in May 1793 for non-support of her five children. Court dismisses complaint. And orders three of uh, the children bound out. Mageville, who took citizen oath in 1787, dies by 1793, leaving an estate valued at, in the show where you can see the information, possibly on the 1803 census as Betsy Brown, following Samuel Brown, 36, a, a Cooper. She listed as a cake maker, age 40. Links are through children registered following number 597. All right, keep it moving. Next, we got, uh, it's uh, still August 18, 1794. Number 28, Edward, Brown, Edward Brandon, a dark brown mulatto man. Five one high, about 45 years old, born free in Dinwiddie County. Copy delivered September 1st, 1800. The former one not returned in 1803, listed as 50 year old carpenter with uh, Suki Brandon, 40, Peter 12, James 10, Fed 8, Peggy 6, and Frankie 6 months. In March 1793, he sued James Weston for trespass, assault, and battery, but dropped the suit at his expense in uh, August 1794. Appears on the 1795 tax list, then with a portion along with unnamed father. All right, keep it moving. 
Next, uh, August 18, 1794, number 29, Frank Stewart, a dark mulatto man, uh, five eight and a half high, 33 years old, born free, and raised in the town of Brantford, uh, Prince George County. All right, next we got August 18, 1794, number 30, Anaka, a stout made dark brown Negro woman, 5'4 high, about 19 years old, emancipated by High Court of Chancery by virtue of an Act of Assembly entitled An Act Concerning the Emancipation of Certain Slaves Belonging to the Estate of Joseph Maya, re entered May 24, 1802. A slave named Anika is among the 25 slaves held in Chesterfield County a portion of the 176 slaves, plus some, some unnamed infants to be freed under the will of Mayo. See Henrico County Legislative Petitions, October 28, 1786. Administrators of Will of Joseph Mayo to General Assembly. See number 475 below. All right, let's keep it going. Next, we have... Um, uh, still August 18, 1794. Number 31 is Priscilla Bailey, a light brown Negro woman, five high, 27 years old, emancipated by Ans Ansel Bailey in Sussex County Court, February 7th, 1800. Second copy delivered, ditto third, May 27th, 1802. Renewed, July 15th, 1805. Scar on right arm, on outside from elbow to wrist. Ditto, April 9th, 1870. Re-entered uh, June 8th, 1820. Re-entered September 5th, 1831. A mole under her right eye. Probably the Chris, freed by Bailey in 1782, Surrey County D, to be freed on January 1, 1785. See... S.Y. Wills, Deeds, number 11, 287, August 22nd, um, 1782. In uh, 1803, a Priscilla Bailey is listed as a 30-year-old laborer, followed by Sally, 9, and Polly, 16. A Priscilla Bailey listed as laborer, on 1821 census, singly with a Polly Bailey, number 980, 29 and 1719, uh, Surrey Freeborn and Sally Bailey, number 1093, 20 in 1720, Petersburg Freeborn, listed nearby but ages, question marks. All right, keep it moving. Next, uh, August 18, 1794, number 32, we got Betty Coleman, stout maid, a dark brown woman, 5'6 high, 27 years old, liberated by a judgment on a general court from John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County, being a descendant of an Indian woman. Renewed uh, July 9, 1805, and September 3, 1819 not listed as a plaintiff in Robin versus John Hardaway, May 2nd, 1772, but would have been but five years old. A Betty Coleman on 1821 census listed singly. Other Betty Coleman's at number 260 and number 290. All right, keep it moving. Next we have, let's see, it's August 18, 1794. Number 33, Tempe Coleman, a dark brown, well-made woman, 5'2 high, 26 years old, liberated by a judgment of the General Court of John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County as being a descendant of an Indian, uh, re-entered September 25th, 1799, October 14th, 1800, September 20th, 1803, not listed as a plaintiff in Robin versus John Hardaway, May 2nd, 1772, but would have been but four years old. 
in January 1706, Billy Coleman, son of Tempe Coleman, is bound apprentice to Joseph Delworth to learn trade uh, fan mill making and is 12 years old on the same day. Sally Coleman, her daughter, age eight, is bound out to Foss Eamon until she is 18. And 1803 is listed as a 40-year-old laborer, followed by Lucy, 19, Billy, 8, Sally, 7, Rachel, 3, and Harry, 8 months. All right, keep it moving. Now, let's see, we're in August, so still August 18, 1794. Number 34, William Tom William Thompson, a light brown mulatto man, five three and a half high, twenty-four years old, born free in Charles City County, re-entered August 24, 1796, a new certificate granted, the old certificate not returned, lost in a vessel, he says. All right, August 18, 1794, number 35, Amy Joyner. A dark brown mulatto woman, 5'2", five two, five two high, about 36 years old, born free and raised in uh, Chesterfield County. Copy delivered uh, August 15, 1800. Renewed July 9, 1805. Renewed June 4, 1808. Has a mole under her left eye on the side of nose. In September 1789, Chesterfield Court orders... John, son of Amy, bound out, C number 219. All right, keep it moving. Next, we have, uh, still, August 18, 1794, number 36, Polly Joyner, a stout, well-made, dark brown mulatto woman, 5'4", high, 25 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County, uh, Re-entered June 9, 1810, has a scar over the left eye and a mole on the right side of her upper lip. In uh, April 1709, court orders Polly Joyner, a free mulatto orphan girl, uh, 14, to be bound out to uh, Polly Joyner. Um, a Polly Joyner is listed as poor on the 1821 census. So again, we see somebody being bound out to a uh, free person of color. All right, keep it moving. August 18, 1794, number 37, Nancy Coleman, a dark brown, well-made mulatto woman, five one and a half high, 27 years old, freed by judgment of the general court of John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County. Being a descendant of an Indian, re-entered October 19, 1818, has a scar on her forehead and uh, through her right eyebrow. Not named as a plaintiff in Robert Robin versus John Hardaway, May 2nd, 1772, but would have been but would have been five years old. All right, next we got. Still August 18, 1794, uh, number 38, William Smith, a light mulatto man, 5'7 high, about 25 years old, born free and raised in Charles County, Charles City County. This certificate was never taken out. Entry crossed out in December 1799, was examined along with two others for stealing wheat from Mr. Campbell. Others not guilty. Smith declared a person of bad fame and has to post $100 bond for good behavior for 12 months security are Plato Cook and Aaron Brandon. All right, keep it moving. August uh, 18, 1794, number 39, Jenny Matthews, a light brown Negro woman, uh, five feet high, 26 years old, Emancipated by Jess Bromley in court, Dinwiddie County. And it says, no extent, Dinwiddie D. All right, next we got uh, August 18, 1794. Number 40 is uh, Judith Brandon, a dark mulatto woman, 4'11 and a half high, 26 years old, born free and raised in Petersburg, re entered 
June 7th, 1800, has a scar on each of her wrists and squints a little and stout mane. See number 22 above. Um, Judith Brandon, born July 16, 1764, recorded as daughter of Mary Brandon in Bristol Parish Register, may appear singly on 1821 census as laborer Judy Brander. All right, keep it moving. Next, we got number 41. Um, yeah, still August 18, 1794. Okay, number 41, Patty Lawrence. Dark brown woman with long black hair. Uh, five feet high, about 40 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. This certificate was never taken out. Entry crossed out. See number 117 for Stiff Lawrence. Born free in Prince George, son of Patty. All right. <clears throat> Uh, August 18, 1794, number 42 is John Smith, a dark brown mulatto man, uh, 6'1 high, 26 years old, born free and raised in uh, Petersburg, note taken out, entry crossed out. Next, um, August 18, 1794, number 43, Matt Morris, a black man, 5'5 five, five, five and a half high, about 46 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. Copy delivered August 14, 1800. Renewed May 11, 1804. Has a mole on left side of his upper lip. All right. Um, August uh, 18, 1794 still. Number 44, 44 is Charles Andrews, a light a light yellow mulatto man, 5'5", five, five, half high, 23 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County, register never taken out, entry crossed out, apparently re-registered, see number 125 below. All right, next, um, let's see, August 18, 1794, we got number 45, William Bond. A dark brown mulatto man, 5'8 high, 41 years old, born free and raised in Petersburg. No certificate delivered, entry crossed out. In 1795, listed in uh, Prince George, part of a uh, tax list reporting four black ties and nine horses slash mules. Probably the brother of James Bond, C. Wilbur. Number two, 182 for James Bond, will dated 1807. Um, JV sent to prison, or I guess that would be James Bond, um, sent to prison for murder of wife. Petersburg Chancery suit 1799-04 identifies William Bond as a hairdresser who operates a, a dray with a hired slave. All right, next number, uh, let's see, August 18, 1794, number 46 is Jenny Brown, a stout made light brown mulatto woman, 5'6 high, 28 years old, born free and raised in Prince George County. Um, next, August 18, 1794, number 47 is Francis Brandon. Um, Dark brown mulatto woman, 5'2 high, 23 years old, born free in Prince George County. Re-entered June 17, 1803. In 1803, a Frankie Brandon, age 26, was listed following Shadrick Brandon. Cooper, age 30. Francis Brown married Shadrick Brandon, number 110 in 1794. All right, next we have... Uh, still, okay, now it's August 19, 1794. Number 48, Arthur Cook, dark brown Negro man, style May, 5'5 five, five high, about 60, emancipated by William Pothers Jr. in court of uh, Prince George County. 
says uh, no certificate delivered, no stamp copy, entry crossed out, free slave man, Tip Tipua in 1795, seat number 108, was security for marriage bond of Jack Brown and Nancy Munn, window and, excuse me, widow in 1793. All right, next we got, um, it's August 19, 1794, number 49, uh, Burwell Flood, a brown mulatto man, five seven and a half high, near 38 years old, born free and raised in Mecklenburg County, no certificate delivered, entry crossed out, and 1795 is listed on the Dinwiddie portion of tax list. All right. Next, uh, August 19, 1794, number 50 is Jenny Flood, a brown mulatto woman, thin maid, 5'4 high, 24 years old, born free, and raised in Mecklenburg County, no, cer no certificate delivered, entry crossed out, see number 305 below for apparent re-registration. All right. Uh, let's see, August 19, 1794. Number 51 is William Brandon, a brown mulatto man, 5'6 high, 25 years old, born free in Dinwiddie County, no certificate delivered, entry crossed out. A Billy Brandon is listed in uh, Prince George portion of 1795 tax list. See number 812 below. In October 1786, William Brandon complained that William Litton to whom he was formerly a servant, threatened to seize and detain him as a slave and take him out of state. In December, the summons against Lytton was returned not to be found and no place of uh, residence. A will book married, married a Lucy Scott in May 1801, the daughter of Benjamin Scott. These are the parents of, uh, excuse me, these are the parents of Griffin Brander number 2,263, uh, 19 and 33, born 1814, who married in 1835, Agnes King, number 1673, 12 and 31, and moves to Missouri, 1841 to 42, Agnes did not go with Griffin, all right, keep it moving. Um, August 19, 1794, number 52, Aldrich Matthews, a brown mulatto man, 5'6 high, 23 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County, copy delivered, September 1st, 1800, former one retained, re-entered, July 1822, mole or scar on left cheek. All right, August 19, 1794, number 53, is uh, Sylvia Brandon, a black mulatto woman, 5'1 high, about 38 years old, born free in, Prince, in uh, Prince George County. No certificate issued, entry crossed out. Um, in 1803, a Sylvia Brandon was listed as 40, following Aaron Brandon, 35, a carpenter, and with John 15, Sarah 14, Joseph 8, Daniel 3. See number 524 below for second entry. A Sylvia Lewis married Aaron, uh, excuse me, Aaron Brandon. Number 244 in November 1786. A Sylvia Brander on 1821 census as laborer listed singly. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll go to 60 and then I'll stop for today. Um, August 19, 1794, number 54 is Sealer Norton, a dark brown mulatto woman, 5'8 high, about 26 years old, born free, and raised in Chesterfield County, no certificate delivered. Uh, let's see, we got... <clears throat> August 19, 1794, number 55, Hannah Ritter, a dark brown Negro woman, 5'2 
five two and a half high, about forty four years old, emancipated by John Shepard in the court of city of Williamsburg, renewed July 9, eighteen oh five, his mother of Joseph, who was bond bond and apprentice to Robert Evans, a tanner, in August seventeen ninety one, and the mother of Joseph Shepard, likely the same who was tried for the manslaughter of her then husband. Ned and his stepfather allegedly were beating her in June 1702. See number 420 below. In 1803, she is listed as a 50-year-old as a 50-year-old cook. And uh, December 1794 was paid by the town for providing care to Michael Ryan. Appears on the 1795 tax list in Whitty Portion, paying for one black. Tithable over 16 named Nanny. All right, keep it moving. August 19, 1794. Number 56, Lucy Corn. A dark brown, stout made mulatto woman with bushy black hair. 5'1 high, about 36 years old, born free, and raised in Chesterfield County. Delivered. Mother of Roland, who some attempted to sell as a slave out of the state and whom Lucy joined in a suit against William Parrott for TAB, not sure what that is. And uh, May 1792, the judgment in May 1794 declares Roland to be freeborn. In December 1778, Phoebe, and in, and in Fe February 1779, Lucy, children of Lucy Corn, ordered bound out by Chesterfield Court. Roland ordered Boo, I think I mean, they meant to say two. Roland ordered two in March uh, 1779 by same court. All right, next we have uh, August 19, 1794. Um, number 57, Mary Morris. A brown mulatto woman, 5'1 high, about 48 years old. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. Son Moses bound out to James Blakely, carpenter, in May 1790. Listed in 1803 as a 51-year-old uh, oakum picker. A Mary Morris, wife of Jack Morris. Uh... Continental soldier awarded support from Chesterfield Court in February 1778, not clear of saying, and Mary Moore and Mary Morris listed singly on 1821 list. All right. Next we have uh, August 19, 1794, number 58, Susanna Coleman, a dark brown woman, five three high. About 26 years old, stout maid, the daughter of Sarah Coleman, who obtained her freedom of Robert Hall by a suit in the general court. And the said um, Susanna has been permitted to pass as free by the said Robert Hall of Dinwiddie County, to whom she belonged, by her mother's obtaining her freedom. See number 215 for brother. Next, um, we got... Still August 19, 1794. Uh, number 59, Charles Brandon, a brown mulatto man, five high, five feet high, about 40 years old, born free in Sussex County. Re entered January 10th, 1811. Five feet one inches high in shoes, has broad thick lips, pitted with smallpox. Re entered uh, January 14th, 1818. Appears in 1795 tax list in witty portion as a free mulatto on uh, Chesterfield tax rolls in 1791-92. All right, let's do, okay, so this is the last one. Now I'll show you a couple things. Um, August 19, 1794, number 60, Cyrus. Dark brown Negro man, 5'4 high, about 21 years old, emancipated by Thomas Hill. In Sussex County Court, renewed 
July 21st, 1851, marginal note. It says, Paul returned, party dead. Uh, interline, possibly in 1851, has a small scar on his left arm between his elbow and wrist. Um, deed book, it says deed book G, 426, uh, March 6, 1790, pre-Sci, among others, note, a uh, Cyrus Hill uh, Peterburg, of Petersburg, Breeze Woman Jenny, Boy Green, number 958 in Shoemaker on 1821 census, and Girl Sophia in August uh, 1701. See uh, Deed Book, number 374, and it says on 1821 census as Shoemaker with children Mariah or Maria. Number 1392, 18 and 1826. Uh, Cyrus, number 2148. Um, 21 and 1832. And Polly, number 1635, 18 and February 1831. Cyrus Hill married Polly Stewart, Spinster, number 539. In July 1821, George M. Anderson officiated. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop. Um, when we continue on with this, we will start off with uh, Tennessee Sneed. Okay, so a couple things, or a few things. Um, this uh, list, as you can see, has a lot of uh, names, and surnames, and even some dates of birth. So in the beginning, when I was telling you about um, this act of assembly passed on December 10th, 1793, an act for regulating the police of towns in this commonwealth and to restrain the practice of Negroes going at large. So basically what these people are having to do is they're getting paperwork to show that they are free, free Negroes. Okay. Some of the, and a lot of these, you're going to see people being emancipated by a certain person. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, let me just type in something real quick. So, let me see here. Let me get rid of this list because this is. Sorry about that. All right. So, let's hit Control F and let's search for a second. So, let's type in. Let's try African. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> out of this whole list of thousands of people in this county, um, three people show up as Africans. So we got this Tapua, and we'll read him real quick because um, he's number 108, and this is uh, January 30th, 1796. Tapua, a dark brown Negro man, African born. Um, five three high, stout maiden, supposed to be about fifty years old, emancipated by Arthur Cook and the Hustings Court of uh, Petersburg in October seventeen ninety five, renewed August fifth eighteen o five. Ditto January fourteenth eighteen ten, has a win on his forehead. Um. Free black man, Sapua, brought at sale of Robert Donald, deceased, uh, August 1794, see number 48 above for Arthur Cook. In 1795, a Scipio appears with unnamed wife, probably still a slave, on the tax list, then witty portion. Um, as name spells, uh, Scipio. When his deed of manumission was or, was ordered re recorded. All right, so let's uh, let's check the other ones. Let me move my picture here. All right. So next person, 
they're claiming is African born is somebody named John Brown. Dark brown Negro man, five five half high, I suppose about fifty years old with short knotty hair. An African born has a mark about the middle of his forehead emancipated and set free by Joseph Harding and Husting. Uh, Petersburg in February seventeen ninety five. Okay. Now let's check the last one. All right, so we got Ebo Joe, number 445. Ebo Joe, a black Negro man, upwards of five, five high in shoes, about 32 years old, has a scar on the upper part of his breast, a gap between his front upper teeth, liberated by a decree of the High Court of Chancery, pursuant to the will of Roe Pleasant's deceased, per registry of uh, clerk of uh, Powhatan County, re-entered um, June 12, 1810, re-entered June 7, 1824, and has lost first joints of two of his left-hand fingers. Although his name might suggest an African birth, this man was probably the Joe listed as being born in August 1775 on page 14 in Pleasant's case cited in number 279 above. He registered in Powhatan on August 21st, 1805 at age 31, described as black by four and a half tall and freed by court of appeals under the wills of John and Jonathan Pleasant's. See Powhatan Register of Free Negroes and Mulattoes, August 21st, 1805. So in this 153-page document, um, they list three people being born as being born African. Now, they don't even know if these people were actually born in Africa or not, so more than likely they probably weren't. But they wrote that information in there because that's that's what they thought. So just wanted to show everybody that. Um, like I said, there's thousands of people listed. And they came up with three people that they tried to say were African born. So who knows? Now, the other thing that I wanted to show everybody, um, a few definitions in the uh, etymology. So the first one we're going to show, so the first one I'm going to show is manumission. Okay, and we're going to read it. And I have it here on the screen for you to see. Manumission. It says liberation from slavery, bondage, or restraint. Um, circa 1400, manumission. Christ's redemption of mankind. Early 15th century, freedom from feudal servitude. And we're going to look up this word feudal. Also, an instance of such release from old French manumission, freedom, emancipation, and directly from Latin manumis manumissionum, nomative manumissio, freeing of a slave, noun of action from past particle, stem of manumitri to set free, from the, from the phrase manumitri, released from control, from manu ablative of manus, power of a master, literally hand, specifically in reference to Negro slavery in British, col British colonies in 1660. All right, it says, the ceremony of the manumiso by, by the vindicta was as following. The master brought his slave before the magistrates and stated the grounds of the intended manumission. The lictor of the magistrate laid a rod on the head of the slave, accompanied with formal words in which he declared that he was a free man, ex jury, peritum, that is vindicative and libertatum, the master, in the meantime, held the slave, and after he had pronounced the words, hunts hominum librium volo, 
he turned him around and let him go. All right, so that is the etymology definition of the word manumission. Okay, now we read this little section here that said freedom from feudal servitude. So let's see what feudal means. So I'll read the definition. Feudal, it's an adjective. 1610s, pertaining to feuds, estates of land granted by a superior on condition of services to be rendered to the grantor. From medieval Latin feudalists, from feudum, feudal estate, land granted to be held as a benefice of, German, of Germanic origins related to the Middle English feodre, one who holds lands of an overlord in exchange for service. All right. So you can look these words up. And the last one I wanted to show is the word emancipate. 1620s, set free from control, from Latin, emancipatus, past particle of emancipare, but, or excuse me, put a son out of paternal authority, declare someone free, give up one's authority over, in Roman law, the freeing of a son or wife from the legal authority, And it says patria potestas of the pater familias to make his or her, her own way in the world from assimilated from of x out away mancipar delivered transfer sale from manancipum ownership from manus hand and it says uh down here not used by the Romans in reference to the freeing of slaves. The verb for this being manumeter, the English word was adopted in the jargon of the cause of religious tolerance. Then anti-slavery, 1776, also uses in reference to women who free themselves from conventional customs, 1850. All right, relatives, so let me stop screen sharing. I wanted to share those uh, little gems with you. So, um, as you all uh, saw there, um, that uh, freeing of people happened in uh, 1794, or basically people had to have paperwork showing that they were free in 1794. Um, again, I'm, I'm really confused about the whole slavery thing. Um, you know, the timelines really aren't adding up to me. Um, but, but again, um, lots of surnames listed there. Um, you could, you know, they're showing the time frame when these people were freed. Um, I don't know. So, like I said, uh, the live stream from Cuda Mayo last night kind of inspired me to do this. Um, much appreciation to that brother. He drops so much. He drops a, a, a ton of knowledge. So, um, definitely uh, big ups to him. And uh, again, I appreciate every single one of you for uh, taking the time out, your precious time out, to uh, check out my videos. Um, again, that um, PDF that I was just reading from is listed on the Free African Americans um, website. Um, so I will have the link in the description. And... Uh, Hopefully that was informative for everybody. Um, again, you know, we need some explanation on what's going on here. Um, slavery was supposed to be, you know, this, this chattel slavery was supposed to be at a certain time frame. So I'm confused. We got, you know, people being freed way, way, way before that ever even happened. So... Um, 
again, uh, the chattel slavery, who did that pertain to? Who, who actually were the slaves? So we need, that, we need those uh, questions answered. All right, relatives, I will see you next time. Later.